everyone. My name is The Horseman, and I'm an artist, a writer, and a dancer. Um, I've been sharing my creativity and wisdom for the past five years now, and I am so grateful for the opportunities, the learnings, and the love I have received from thousands worldwide. Um, to celebrate my five years on social media, I would like to share one of my talents that most viewers have overlooked, which is poetry. These are poems that I wrote throughout the past five years of my career. Um, I, only, I only write poems rarely, so there isn't much material other than a few complete poems. The rest, the rest of these poems are unfinished considering I suffer from art block and writer's, writer's block. Um, a couple of disclaimers before I re read them. Um, firstly, this audio recording may contain several stuttering blocks as I am a serial stutter, a serial stutterer, so bear with me. Um, lastly, a few of these written materials contain dark and explicit themes, so viewer discretion is advised. And, um, with that being said, let's get to the first poem. Um, also after, after each poem, I will be, um, explaining some of the meanings behind these unfinished works along with completed works. Um, with that being said, um, the first one, um, the first one is a untitled poem, uh, which is, uh, simply titled Complications or something. Um, I wrote, I wrote this back in April of 2022. And it goes something like along the lines of this. Lo loving myself was complicated. I searched for love, but instead procrastinated. My love for you was underrated, and your love for me was overrated. My spectrum was always rated. My mind was never graded. I felt like I was most hated because of what I've created. My art, which I've demonstrated, but my millennium is still debated. When I, gradu when I graduated, I felt emancipated, but my world was still segregated. I've been nominated, but never celebrated. My music was outdated, but their opinions are unrelated. So why did I accelerate it when my spectrum was underrated? And that's the end of this poem. It's pretty short. Um, but I wrote, I wrote this because during the past four years of high, of my high school days, I have I've been mostly, I felt like I was discriminated, both in a good and bad way. Um, for those that don't know, I, I have, I'm, I'm, I'm on the spectrum, I am on the spectrum, which is, which is autism. Um, and, uh, and I, and, uh, during my high school, high school years, I, I was considered one of the, one of the most popular kids, but, I can't help but feel the reason was that for that it was because of my disability. I mean, of course, of course, I'm a talented art. I see myself as a good artist, a good dancer, but I feel like they only care to watch it because, because I'm on a spectrum and they don't really see the actual me. They only see my disability. And, um, that's why I tend to forget most of my high school high school years because I don't want to be seen as I don't want to be seen more I don't want to be seen less I just want to be treated the same as everybody else if you're going to be if you're going to, if you're going to treat everyone else like an asshole treat me like an asshole if you're going to treat everyone else everyone else like a god treat me like a god Nothing more, nothing less. Just the same. So when I was in college, so, uh, during my freshman, during my freshman year in college, um, one of my art, one of my art professors, um, uh, uh, said, uh, told, told me what I, what I, what I was told the class, what I, what I was actually thinking. And that, um, even though, even though I have skills, uh, I want to be, I want to be treated the way everyone else is treated. I want to be criticized the way everyone else is criticized. And that right there 
that that when I that's when I truly felt that I was really accepted because because when uh, when I when I when I do my when I when I when I create art um, make make my port portraits and so on. Uh, people, people say, "Oh my God, you're amazing! Your your artwork is amazing! Your artwork is amazing!" Without without even criticizing criticizing it. But now I'm in college. I want everyone criticize. Uh, well, not everyone, but some 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 people criticize my work. And not not, uh, not really. I don't mind because I want my work to be criticized as it's a way for me to grow and expand my work. So that's that's one of the reasons. Why that's one of the main reasons why I wrote this poem. Another one is a poem I wrote back in November. Um, it's titled, well, it's untitled, another untitled poem. Um, I went through hell. I coached with Chappelle. My daddy's in a cell, but he'll never tell. I went from a sperm cell to pastels, drawing seashells on my stairwell. I prayed in a sickened shell, hoping my parents don't live in a sickle shell. I've never wrote a carousel because I was too busy ringing Liberty Bell. Liberty Bell. And that's, that's pretty much it. It's a, it's a really short, it's a really short poem. It doesn't really have much meaning. It might have some meaning to it, but I don't know. Anyway, let's move on to the next, to the next one. Okay, the next one is the first completed poem of this series is titled A Pimp's Chicken, which was written back in early May of 2023 um, and goes the line or something. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, this is the first, uh, this is my first expletive poem of the series, so if your discretion is strongly adv advised. In the depths of the ghetto, a chicken's life unfolds. A dark tale of despair where darkness takes its hold. Crack epidemics grip, suffocating every breath. A jazz woman in the shadows facing life's cruel test. A, a welfare system failed, unable to provide, leaving her in the shadows where hope seemed to hide. A weak family structure where love has seldom found. Let her searching for belonging on un untainted on tainted battlegrounds. Her father, a corrupt soul, a pimp with wicked ways, forced her to the darkness where innocent betrays. So, selling her body just to feed her father's knees, a cycle of abuse where pain and sorrow, need, sorrow, and sorrow breeds. Education's chance was stolen when she became a child, a pregnancy caused by her father so cruel and wild, kicking out her, kicking out her house, Kicked, kicked out her home and kicked out her home. She wandered through the streets from house to house, pimp to pimp, where, where despair and danger meets. An older pimp emerged, a sinister, a sinister and vile sight with demons in his heart, causing endless inner, inner fight. They're, they're dwelling a den of chaos filled with crooks and strife. A place where dreams are shattered and innocent takes a life. A pimp's word echoed darkly, a threat she couldn't bear. Escape, but a, but a mirage as he watched her everywhere. Alcohol became her refuse, numbing pain deep inside, seeking solace in isolation where her sorrows would hide. In a bathroom alone and scared, she brought life to the world. But fate that, but fate dealt a cruel hand. Her joy was quickly un unfurled. Her firstborn, premature, breathed for only moments fleet. A weight of loss consumed her in a tragic, heart-wrenching beat. Distraught and broken, she saw no hope in sight. The burden she had carried became too heavy to fight. In the depths of despair, she made a choice so grim. A tragic end in the bathtub. Her light grew fate and dim. Um, this poem delves into the dark and tragic realities faced by, by individual portrayed 
metaphorically as a chicken, growing up as a black woman during the crack epidemic in a a deterrizing neighborhood. It explores themes of ineffective welfare, a weak family structure, and destructive cycle of abuse and despair. Um, this poem highlights the struggles of hardships faced by the woman, the undone named woman, who, from being raised by an abusive father who forces her into prostitution, to being trapped in a cycle of homelessness, exploitation, and addiction. It showcased the harsh realities of the environment filled with junkies, crooks, and, su and, and the suffocating grip of a toxic and controlling pimp. Ultimately, the poem depicts the despair and, hope and hopelessness that plagues the woman's life, leading to a tragic end. It, it aims to shed light on the consequences of so societal neglect, broken systems, and the absence of support, urging us to examine and address the dark underbelly of society. It's, and it also serves as a reminder of the importance of empathy, compassion, and working towards more just and supportive, to, towards a more just and supportive environment where individuals are not left to suffer in the shadows. Our next poem is a, another Antalo poem untitled poem which um it which has a working title but it's not really final is titled harmonies and hurdles um which is goes i was raised speaking to bondics while being hooked on phonics i worked like i was sardonic be, then they took my like my electronics i was petrified of animatronics because they always found they always sound harmonic. I wanted a woman who was exotic, but they all acted platonic, like I was on a tectonic, I, and I wanted to call the, pent the pentatonics. They say my spectrum was chronic, so I injected my eyes with onyx. I failed economics because I was too busy making comics. I was too busy reading comments. And I became anxious about commitment because... I wasn't gracious for your nonsense. Um, I'm probably wondering why I mentioned anim animat uh, animatronics. Uh, the mentions of being petrified of animatronics, uh, which are often known for their harmonic sound, uh, um, I tend to fear the animated robotic figures. Um, and... And I think, and I, and this poem, and this part of the poem, um, stem from a sense of unfamiliarity and a discomfort towards my view with the world around me. Um, um, <sighs> Um, the line about ejecting my eyes with onyx is pretty metaphorical and can, and, and, and it's interpreted as a way of seeking a different perspective of attempting to see the world differently. Um, however, it, however, it has resulted in a sense of failure in economics, um, due to a lack of focus, due, uh, due to my lack of focus and distraction from other pursuits such as making comics and reading reading comments on so on social media. As far as ebonics and phonics, um, I grew I grew up um, I grew up in a in a traditionally black um, a, a traditionally black family. Um, a sing, um, I, grew, I grew up with a sing, grew up with a single mother. Um, and, uh, and, uh, okay, and occasionally my step, my step father would, would come, would come around and we would hang out, hang out his, his side of the family, his, uh, his, uh, his side of the family. And, um, and, uh, they were all speaking in phonics, which is, which was a, which, which is, which is a, which is African-American slang of some sort, some sort. 
Uh, well, some some may view it, view it as, as a get, ghetto form. Um, but when it comes to phonics, it's um, it was a te technique. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, phonics is a technique where they teach children of uh, where they teach young young uh, young children how to read through visual aid and um i along with my twin brother were taught were taught um phonics not just because we were young we were young but also because we uh we were on the spec we were on the spectrum and they think that we, and they believe that we would understand um right away so they put us in phonics Oh, sorry, 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 but they, yeah, but they never, and, uh, and, 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 okay, my next poem is sentimental solitude um i hope i hope you i hope you enjoy this one i'm in a sentimental mood feeling the groove not in a unforgettable few just here to prove my hue is seen as rude but i won't be subdued they hear my voice as blue blue and misconstrued they su they say my life is screwed judged without a clue though i never touch finger food they misconstrue they see me as a prude, but I'm not here to elude. I don't want to, I just don't want to get sued, staying in my own latitude. I changed my attitude, no longer in the interlude, to regain my altitude, breaking free from the solitude. I tried the devil's food and felt the tempting magnitude, but I had to seclude, fighting my own interlude. I've changed my magnitude, rewriting the prelude, and I'm currently in my solitude where my growth accrued. After 100 years of gratitude, embracing, embracing fortitude, I am freed from invo involuntary servitude, my spirit renewed. I raise above, I rise above the judgment breaking through the chains, transforming pain into power from feeling for my gains. No longer confined by the perceptions they Im impose, I'm in control of my narrative nobody knows. From the shadows to the spotlight, I've claimed my space, causing, using my voice to create, inspire, and embrace. No longer confined by their narrowed-minded views, I've found the ration in my own hue. I paint my own pictures with words as my brush, expressing my truth, turning pain into a lush. I've, le I've learned to rise above their misconceptions and lies, no longer defined by their limited skies. I overcome the barriers, transcended the strife, unlocking my potential, rewriting my life. No longer limited by the judgments they cast, I stepped into the my power, breaking free at last. I'm in a sentimental mood, but I won't be subdued. Not defined by the feud, but my own fortitude. They may see me as, a, as crude, but I refuse to be skewed. I hear the proof I'm breaking through with gratitude. I found my liberation, my freedom, my voice no longer held back. I'm making my voice. I rise above the challenge to challenge the misconception using my art as a weapon in all directions. So hear me as I soar like an eagle in flight, defying the eyes pushing through the night. I've come too far to be silenced and subdued. I found my liberation, my soul. My soul's latitude. I'm a, I'm in a sentimental mood, breaking through the veil, no longer restrained. I'm ready to unveil the power within, the strengths that reside. I'm rewriting the narrative, defined as high. So listen closely to these words I bring, a testament of resilience, a song I sing. No longer confined by the narrow view, I'm standing tall, embracing my truth.
this one is probably my most controversial poem, piece of material in my entire five years of my career. Um, this poem is a, it's like a diss track, but it's also a diss poem to, um, to Patrice Colors, um, to see, uh, the found, one of the founders of Black Lives Matter. Um, um, I, I, I've been, I've been, op- I've been open to, I've been open about my criticism towards Black Lives Matter. Um, Black Lives Matter since 2021. Um, that same uh, that same year, I wrote a poem um, about uh, about well not well not well 2022. Yeah, 2022. I wrote a poem um, regarding uh, regarding my thoughts on Black Lives Matter and how it's a scam. Uh, not only a scam, but all they care about is convenience towards them. Um, so I would like, so, so I would like to share an updated, uh, version of the, po- of the poem. Um, so I hope you enjoy this, um, this piece and I hope you, you, you learn, you learn, you'll learn, you'll learn something in this. And after that, I will do a in-depth description about my about my poem so I hope you enjoy it dear Miss Colors I hear your voice preaching justice but as a choice you claim to stand for a racial equality against police brutality yet your focus seems divided fueled by selective morality you cry against police calling for their for, for their defunding, but what about the thieves who leaves hearts pounding? You march for Floyd, but not for Zion. You see inconsistency, the bias you rely on. Black Lives Matter, you say when it's convenient, but where's the, the support for Yolanda, the lives expedient? You donated to your baby daddy, but what about Trayvon's family, who yearns for justice, seeking closure and unity? You preach the words of justice while taking away second chances, noticing greenback ignoring black on black circumstances. You want to defund the cops, but what about the crooks who steal away our dreams, leaving us profounded, popping my pops while you turn a blind eye to to the struggles we face with no help in supply. You weep you weep for Brianna, but where are your tears for Sasha? The lives lost overshadowed by convenient drama. Black lives matter. You preach without consistency. When it aligns with your agenda, but not your reality, you spend millions on mansions, care, on mansions, care, careless in, in carelessness in the foundation, while neglecting the true fight for justice and liberation. You want to lock up all the pigs, but what about our innocent brothers caught in the system's grass, suffering from unjust covers? You kneel the pig, the pigs in a corner without holding Dorner accountable. Ignoring the co- complexity, leaving our communities vulnerable. There are times when we need you, your voice and influence, but other times your presence feels unnecessary, devoid of substance. It seems that Black Lives Matter only when someone else is the oppressor. But when it's with our, within our community, your concern grows lesser. You call us out for being sellouts while you sell out those you claim to protect. Your actions speak louder, revealing the flawed intellect, but stand without true knowledge, believing your word is law. But when reality, but within reality, you leave us feeling flawed, raw. You demand the pigs to curb their obedience, but when will you curb your own convenient convenience? Dear Miss Colors, it's time, it is time to reflect on your role, to truly listen to the struggles we face and make us whole. Black Lives Matter, we chant with might, demanding equity and end to the fight. But does our movement falter, falter indeed? When we ignore the strife that within we breed, Black Lives Matter 
is a powerful cry, but it must be consistent without the Korean lie. We must let us re- let's, let us unite for justice for every single life, acknowledging the flaws, embracing unity amidst the strife. It's time to bridge the gaps, heal the wounds we bear, uplift the voice of the silence, showing that we care. Let us dismantle the systems within and without, for only then we can bring change, erase any lingering doubt. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm. This took a lot out of me. This took a lot out of me. But I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. This poem addresses my concerns and observations regarding the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I acknowledge Miss Color's voice and her preaching of justice, but I also but I also question the consistency and focus of her message. Um, my poem highlights the perceived divide and selective morality within the movement. My questions emphasize on defunding the police while overlooking other forms of violence, such as crimes within the community. Um, my points out, uh, I point out the dispensancy between marching for high profile cases like George Floyd while, neglect, while neglecting no lesser known victims like Zion and Yolanda. This poem challenge Miss Color's commitment to racial equality, suggesting that her support may be convenient rather than genuine. It questions her allocations of resources, referencing the spending on mansions instead of directing funds towards families seeking justice like Trayvon Martin's family. Furthermore, this poem criticizes the movement for failing to address the community's complexity. It, um, my poem points out the lack of attention to black on black crimes and the need for individual to hold individuals accountable, regardless of race. Um, I demand consistency and accurate knowledge from Patrice Colors. Urge, and I urge her to reflect on her role and listen to the struggles faced by the community. Um, this poem emphasizes the importance of unity, acknowledging shared flaws and working towards justice for every life. Ultimately, this poem encouraged the reevaluate the reevaluation of Black Lives of the Black Lives Matter movement urging a focus on dismantling systemic issues, uplifting silence voices and striving for true unity. And it suggests that genuine change can only be achieved when all aspects of, of the movement align with its core principles. And this is my thoughts towards Black Lives Matter. Um, 
these next two poems are are both untitled. Well, one well one of them is entitled, and the other one is a unreleased rap verse I wrote. I wrote an unfinished unreleased rap verse. So this first one is the first one is an untitled uh, poem that I wrote back in twenty in early twenty twenty two. So I hope you enjoy this one. I guess. They never came to visit. They never gave me credit. Walking with blue helmets. Waiting for the exit. My rhymes are cryptic. My beats feel like cystic. They see me as artistic, but I'm just autistic. They call me narcissistic, but I'm just futuristic. I'm tired of being a statistic. It's time to be logistic. And that's the end that's about it since it's since it's very short and un, and unfinished. This next this next poem or rap verse is also is also unfinished. It's also unfinished, but I, but but um I would like but um I would like to share um my rap but my rapping side of um I don't I don't really rap too often, uh, I don't really like Warm my voice into, into the music I create, but on, on rare occasions, on rare occasions, I I would write several rap ver- rap verses, and um at one at one day I wrote I wrote I wrote this I wrote this one, um while while um while um while I um while while I was on my day day off day off from campus, so December twenty twenty two, um I hope I hope you enjoy I hope you enjoy this one um. Keep, keep in mind that this is my first time rapping to you all. So be prepared for what I'm, for what I'm about to say. Um, nah, 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 I'm probably not gonna rap. Nah, nah, I'm not, I'm probably not gonna rap, rap in this one. I might, I might, I might have some, off some, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, stuck in a hut, chat with a grunt, nut in a slug. Sat on a punt, scattered on a spread. He called me a rat. I filled him with a Cyrus sat. Ran him with my Hellcat. McNutt, McFuck went in a went on a manhunt. I saw Chad getting ducked, then started on on the cunt. Disrupt the rust. They thought I was a glunt. Sucked on a blunt. Oh, that oh that was Emily. We kissed hypo- we kissed hypothetically. Surrounded in sesame. I ran it on her family, then hooked up with Stephanie. She says she's from Brooklyn. Her mom was a shorty. Her father lives in Brooklyn. He was a bit, he was a bit parky. He called me a darky. I called him a buffoon. He sounded pretty snarky. Then I called him a more, then I called, then he called me a coon. Coon skin no more. Call me Crothers. I fucked his whore right in front of her brookie brother. And uh, that and uh, that's what and uh, that's what I did. I, um, I, have, I have another one where I rap where I rap about Bayside Breeze, but I'm saving it for late. But I'm saving it for later on in the future. Well, that's uh, about it in my. That's about it when it comes to all my poetry, poetry sessions. Um, I hope uh, I hope you all hope I hope you all enjoy. Um, some, some of my poems, I'm sorry if I, um, if I sound tired, I, I am currently recording this at, um, um, 1.20 a.m. So, um, we, so I, uh, I started, record, I started recording at, 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 at around midnight. And so, and at, at the time of recording this, it, it is 1.21 a.m. So, so before, so before I sleep for this, for today, just want to say thank you all for your love and support over the past five years. Um, this has been a remarkable journey and I appreciate all of your love and support. Oh, oh. Mm. But anyway, um, but anyway, I hope you, I hope you guys enjoy. Make sh- uh, make. Sh-
make sure you comment on your favorite part, I guess. And to another, to another, cheers to another five years of making content for you all. And I will see you all in the next one. I love you all. I love you all very much. And God bless. And remember, the best is yet to come. The best of the horsemen is yet to come.